Good morning. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Pastor Sean, and today is Thursday. Thursday? Thursday, July 2nd, and this is your morning prayer for the day. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. See, our text for today is Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 48, a continuation of the last several days. <laughs> Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell on those who, who, all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed, because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of, our, of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain for some days. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right, so this this is a text that uh, I would have had to deal with a lot back in uh, Oklahoma <laughs> with all the, the Baptist and Pentecostal um, Christians because it, it what we see going on here at the end is how the, the Gentiles all of a sudden received the Holy Spirit apart from seemingly apart from baptism so they received the Holy Spirit they began speaking in tongues uh, it says the Holy Spirit is poured out on them and then they are baptized later like afterwards so which fits in with this division of there's the baptizing um, baptism of the Holy Spirit which is usually accompanied by signs like speaking in tongues and then there's water baptism which is our work of obedience that we do it as a an outward sign of of what has that we do it as as obedience to to Christ. <laughs> so, what do we make of this? Well, first of all, you know Peter um, preaches preaches to the to these Gentiles, um, you know, lays it all out, and through the preaching, through hearing of the word, faith comes by hearing. The Holy Spirit falls upon all of them, and. What we you, you gotta gotta read what's going on here to see what's happening. So he says, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter. So Jews had come with Peter, or or Jews, Jewish Christians, you know, Jewish converts, who had been circumcised. And you know, notice that he says among the circumcised who had come with Peter, they were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even to the Gentiles. So if you think back to you know, what happened previously when the Holy Spirit was poured out and there was speaking of tongues? Where did it happen? In Jerusalem, with the Jews. Okay? So that pouring of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was for the Jews. And that was 
you know, the, the spirit coming and, and bringing Jesus, essentially. You know, the, the proclamation of Christ goes forth into the world. Well, now, like we said uh, yesterday or the day before that, how this text here is not about, you know, eating food and clean animals, whatever. This is a turning point. What happens here is the the proclamation of the gospel is, is, is pivoting from just focusing on the Jews to now broadening to include Gentiles. So what happens here is, is really, it's focusing on the fact that these Gentiles are given the gift of the Holy Spirit without being circumcised, without becoming Jews, because that that was the idea. And, and if you go through the, the epistles with Paul especially, he talks about the Judaizers, which were a group of, of people who were going to all these Christian churches, that Paul's planting all these churches, for, and Gentiles were coming to, to faith. Well, these Judaizers would come to these churches and say, look, you need, if you really want to be a Christian, you need to become a Jew first. You have to be circumcised. You have to be kosher. You have to follow all the laws, and then your faith will be complete. So Paul was furious with these guys. And so that's what we see going on right here, is, is the point is being made. God is, is giving this, is showing Peter and the apostles that you do not have to be a Jew to be a part of the kingdom. You know, the Gentiles, you know, the, the, the idea was, oh, we're going to bring these Gentiles in, and we're going to circumcise them, and we're going to put them under the law, essentially. Um, bring them under, make them Jews, so then they could fully be followers of Christ. So what God does here is an amazing thing. He pours out the Holy Spirit on these Gentiles without being circumcised. And... Um, so that's, that's what God is doing. He's doing something special. And he's not, he's not setting up a pattern by saying like, okay, now, so if, if, you're, if, if you're a believer, then you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit, you will speak in tongues, and then you will be baptized. You know, and the separation between us all. It, that's not happening here because <laughs> Peter sees that there's a, this baptism of the, or that the Holy Spirit has come upon them. And what's his first reaction? Is like, oh, well, let's get them baptized. Peter is kind of showing the connection that baptism in water and the, the giving of the Holy Spirit are together. They, 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 can't, they, they happen you know, at the same time. <laughs> they are two things that are brought together in, in one thing. And it is all God's work. God is pouring out the Holy Spirit. So the cool thing that we see here is that God is doing this thing for the Gentiles. And why this is a great thing for us is because we are all Gentiles. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm speaking to my audience at, at, at Ascension, but, um, well, with the exception of one. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, by and large, you know, unless, like I said, unless you're a Jewish Christian, you know, the rest of us, we're, we're Gentiles. And so, and, and, and more even beyond just being a, a Gentile, but that what baptism delivers, you know, it, it is the, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit that this, this gift is, is not, you know, you don't have to adhere to, you know, to go through all the laws and say, well, now I need to, oh boy, it's like, well, you need to love your neighbor. That's, that's the law for us. <laughs> uh, love God, love your neighbor. There you go. Um, but, you know, the, the idea that, well, you need to accomplish all this and then you can receive. It's like, no, you need to, you need to be dead in trespasses. You need to be a sinner. Uh, that, that's the requirement for faith. <laughs> You're a sinner. Um, and Christ comes and, and brings you to life. Um, so it's, it's, it's a great thing that, uh, that's going on here. Um, in which, uh, God is, is pouring out his spirit and now expanding the scope to be to include Gentiles and saying there's no burden for you to come to me. Um, you know, you don't have to become a Jew to become a Christian. You have to be a sinner and be forgiven. That's it. And that's all of us. Um, praise be to God that, uh, you know, we, 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 we have been brought to him and we've been baptized in his name. So the Holy Spirit... He's been poured out upon us. Um, you know, we don't have to you know, wait for speaking in tongues or anything like that. Those, that gift has had its day and its past. Um, and so if you are baptized, you have the gift of the Holy Spirit, that connection to Christ. That is, you know, why we cross ourselves. It's a, it's a memory of our baptism. Um, saying, I was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
That's why we do that. Um, so that we can constantly remember, I'm a baptized child of God. He loves me. He's placed his Holy Spirit in my heart. He does not want me to ever be without him. He has saved me. He has forgiven me. And uh, that's a wonderful thing. I mean, you should start and end your day like that, you know. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. Um, wonderful. Wonderful. Mm, good stuff. <laughs> Great way to start today. All right, so let's pray. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. I uh, hope you have a wonderful day, and peace be with you.